right now coming to you live from my car. I live out of uh, that I live such a simple life uh, that I've been able to take back my resources, take back my time, take back my money, uh, take back some of the mental anxieties, worries, and stresses that materialistic things bring. Uh, specifically too big of a house, specifically too many clothes, specifically too many trash cans. You got a trash can in your bathroom, trash can in your kitchen, trash can in your garage, you know, too many paper towel holders. Too much stuff equals too much stress. And this simple life, even if I did get a home base, the lesson I've learned and the lesson I share with you if you never see me again, is in simplicity, is healing from this hurtful world which can crush you mentally if you are not on guard. The scriptures often say that you need to be on guard and you need to guard your mind, body, and soul. And part of guarding yourself is not falling in to living above your means. It's not falling into the trap of take on a huge amount of college loan debt, then get out of college, then start a family, then race to make more money so you can spend more money then have kids, then get overwhelmed, then just repeat a cycle and be crushed in your spirit. Now, it's not easy because even when you do everything right, at any moment, at any moment, any of us can be broken and there can be trouble in paradise. Even I experienced that today. Thank you. Ah, oh, man, I'm speaking some good stuff. Thank you. I'm sorry the thing was muffled because I probably had the thing. Uh, damn, I'll speak some good stuff. Even I... Thank you, everyone, for the feedback. Always let me know if the video or audio is off. Damn, I was, that was some good stuff, too. Hope you, hope you got that. Hope you got that. But even I experienced some trouble in paradise today. The red tide has made its way over to the east coast of Florida. What is the red tide? The red tide is a mix of things. It's a mix of natural occurring things that happen in a body of water. Uh, when you have hot temperature in conjunction with uh, pollutants uh, from farmland, from the sugar industry uh, that's down here in Florida, and man-made pollutants uh, and sewer systems, etc. And the water management of uh, the infrastructure in southern Florida, a little bit aged, uh, the dam around Okeechobee, about 70 years old. And how that's managed is a little bit odd. So all together on the West Coast, they've been experiencing it in Florida for a while. Um, and it's happened over the course of time in many decades. But basically this algae forms, it sucks up all the oxygen uh, in the waterways. And it kills wildlife and it makes the air um, toxic. Uh, and it makes swimming in it toxic. Palm Beach County. One of the richest counties uh, in America. Uh, basically, uh, that's where Trump has Mar-a-Lago, uh, Palm Beach County. Okay, And for it to go over there, it's only happened a few times. So, you know, of course, that put a red flag in my spirit. That, you know, anything can happen at any time. You can be in love. You can be in love and you can think that there'll never be trouble in paradise. And then all of a sudden... A wave, a red tide hits your relationship and sucks the oxygen right out of your soul. That quick, life can change. That quick, life can change. You need to be very mindful in life. That you live with urgency. That you seize the moment. That you never take anything for granted. And that you don't hold on too tight. To an idea of paradise. Uh, and, and you realize that what you do affects your environment. You know, um, and what you don't do affects your environment. And sometimes when there's trouble in paradise, sometimes it just takes time for things to pass. Okay. Whether it's a tide, whether it's a, a seasonal uh, time of year where there's warm temperatures. Or, you know... Whether you're in a bad point in your relationship or your finances, sometimes the tide just has to you know, make its way to wash out. But sometimes you're in a 
pivotal point in history where there may be such a thing as atmosphere changing, uh, temperature increasing, your life going a different course forever. You don't know. There's no exact science to life. There is science, and science is wisdom. Science is basically the studying of data over time and through history, through the data that we gather in history and through uh, experiments and through trial and error, um, you make better and better choices. That's pretty much what science is, uh, but it's not exact. There's no exact science in life. You can form your life to set it up perfectly in paradise, but all of a sudden there could be trouble. All of a sudden, fucking red tide just hits your life. How do you deal with it? Back to simplicity. Back to keeping things as simple as possible. With It doesn't have to be bare essentials, but it should be the essentials. Keep things simple in your relationship. Keep things simple in your life. The removing of stress is the healing. And that's what I was saying early on when I went live. And I know the, the sound was a little bit muffled. But the removal of as much stress as possible, you're always going to have stress and you're always going to need some things to have some level of comfort, okay? Um, no, because if I was living bare, bare simplicity, I wouldn't have a car, okay? I would be walking around with a backpack and I see people like that. I don't want to live like that. I want some comforts, okay? And I may want more uh, and I may still get that home base. But what I'm sharing with you tonight is how do you deal with trouble in paradise? Well, one is trouble in paradise can hit and it will hit. And very much so unexpectedly. But the signs were always there. There's always going to be signs to show why it's there. But the only way to deal with trouble in paradise is to have a simple life with low levels of stress. Because it is not, it is not, the 350 pound man that sits on the camel that breaks its back. It's the straw that breaks the camel's back. It's the straw that causes trouble in paradise. It's the accumulative effect of neglect, the accumulative effect of adding too much stress, the accumulative effect of adding too many pollutants in your life or in the lake. And that's how all of a sudden, it didn't happen overnight, trouble in paradise. It's the accumulative effect of getting into a routine of having General Toys chicken on Thursday night. And then all of a sudden, high blood pressure and you're in the emergency room. It's the accumulative effect of having three beers every night. All of a sudden, trouble in paradise. Keep it simple. Avoid stress as much as possible. You could have some. There's no way around that. And be mindful of these things. Okay? That's the main thing I want to share with you. And now we go all live comments. Woohoo! First, brother. Good to see you. Woohoo! Love and respect. San Diego is in our sights. Forward we go. Thank you, woohoo, for telling me the sound is bad. Again, if the video quality or sound quality is ever bad, please speak up. I'll eventually see the comment and I'll say, oh, shit. So what I have to learn, and I'll learn over time. Sometimes we have to make the several several mistakes uh, and we eventually learn, hopefully. When I put my phone in my holder, that's why I used to go live on YouTube, is if I put it too tight to the end here, it blocks the microphone. And so I have to ease it off a little bit, give it a little bit of room to breathe. HV Genius, sound of the week, thank you. Alan to a phone, fix your audio, Sam. Bull Jive, there you go, sounds great. Thank you, Bull Jive, good to see you, brother. Alan to a phone, thumbs up, love and respect to the Space Coast. Okay, that's Melbourne. I talked to a guy uh, today at work, uh, he's down in Miami. And he said he loves, he said he wants to get the hell out of Miami, okay? Because Miami is crowded as hell. So no, let's not lie about that, okay? And what he said is he loves Melbourne, okay? Space Coast, okay? Shout out to Satellite Beach, Melbourne. My friend Karen, love and respect. Uh, that whole strip, A1A, beautiful. Great surfing, okay? Good waves. Now, palm trees aren't as magical as South South Florida. And the water isn't as teal. But, because you're right at the subtropical line. Okay, if you put a line between Tampa, Orlando to Melbourne 
Everything above that, subtropical. Everything below that, tropical. Uh, and that's where you get the difference with palm trees and the color in your ocean. But right now, Melbourne, they don't have a red tide, okay? Because they're just above the Gulf Stream. That's what separates tropical from subtropical, okay? Once you get a little bit below Melbourne into Vero Beach, that's subtropical. There's, that's the Gulf Stream. Now, the Gulf Stream brought that red tide up into the Atlantic, okay? That's partly what happened to L1204. There you go. Uh, Zelda. Hey, Sam. Better. Praise the Lord. Andy G. Hey, Sam. Hey, folks. Rob. Sounds good now. Praise the Lord. What up, Sammy? Red tide sucks. Yes, it does. Got to protect those waterways, man. Uh, L1204. Uh, I was wondering if you were north of the red tide. I can't go to my favorite beach this weekend. Well, I just happen to be north of the uh, red tide. Usually, I am south of it. I'm right there. Uh, but I've been thinking about this time window I have before it gets too cold of going to see my mother before the dead of the winter. So I'm debating tomorrow after work if I want to start to migrate up back to Jersey for a few days to see my mother. I may not. I haven't decided yet. Um, but I wanted to at least make my way north in preparation of that. And that's what I did. And then I just happened to be away from it. And then like L1204 commented on my video today and my man Milano who lives down in Miami said, Man, that red tide is uh, just came on the East Coast, and, and they're supposed to. There were some beaches that were shut down, uh, you know, and even like a block within that, they didn't want them breathing in the air because it was that bad. Now there's million dollar homes on some of those uh, southern beaches. Uh, that's how quick life can. And believe me, if it starts to affect them, then people will wake up, and that's what it takes sometimes. Um, you never really appreciate something until it affects you. Even like I know somebody brought the red tide up in the summer on my live feed. And to my own fault, I even said, look, I haven't seen any problems. Uh, it wasn't affecting me. It was all in the Southwest. You never appreciate something until it affects you. Okay. And just like, you know, people say it's a good economy. For many people it is. But if you're going through bad times, you, you don't feel that. Okay. Everything's relative to what you experience. And the more you experience, the more you broaden your perspective, the more you visit the country and the city, the more you visit northern states and southern states, the greater your perspective, the greater you see more things that affect people outside of your own self. And that's what gives you greater perspective and a compassion and all these different things, of course. But you got to experience it yourself uh, or else you're just, you know, even me, I'm guilty of it. I'm guilty of it. Uh, you know, if it doesn't affect me, it's kind of like, you know, I, I have to be very conscious. Uh, you know, this is the way we're life. I went to a foe. Oh, oh, I read that. Bill Jive. Hey, Sammy. What's up, man? I was wondering what time you get up and over to the gym and get a shower and you daily get rolling. On the weekdays when I'm at work, 5 a.m. I get up, 5.30 the latest. Uh, on the weekend, sometimes I sleep till about 6.30. I'm up every day, you can assure, by the grace of God, by 7 a.m. On work days, uh, by 5.30 a.m. Uh, try to hit the gym by six again, just light workout, um, shower, uh, brush my teeth, etc. Andy G how long, and I saw uh, one lady, she's definitely living full time in her uh, minivan, uh, well, like a little storage unit on top of it at one of the uh, planet fitnesses. I was at the past couple days. Uh, what was I mad at her? I ain't mad at her. You know, she was, I, you know, she was just doing her Andy G how long does the red tide stay around? Well, good question. I researched that. There's no exact science. Okay, There's no exact science. Mother Nature will show up and no scientist can f fully say. Uh, sometimes it's two weeks. Sometimes it's nine months. Sometimes it's two years. Sometimes if we're in the midst of true atmospheric climate change, true pollution, uh, the whole world could shift just that quick. Or we can just be in a cycle that nobody knows. That's just part of like the every couple hundred years. And because of some man-made stuff. And then it just resets itself and then you know we just keep going on no one knows the answer it's it's inconclusive but we can say that all these accumulative effects of different things some natural occurring some man-made uh and maybe some things that have caused harm over time they're all playing a factor but you know florida you know part of that heat and that water and the, the levee the infrastructure being old all those things play a part um there's no exact science there's a, a cumulative effect of a variety of things and just like there is a cumulative effect of a variety of things that's causing it, there's going to have to be a cumulative effect of things that resolve it. And, that, and then there's never going to be perfect. 
There's always going to be trouble in paradise. There's always going to be Florida's beautiful, then a hurricane, then a natural disaster comes and wipes everything out. Right now, California hasn't had a massive earthquake in decades. I remember watching the World Series when the Giants, the San Francisco Giants were playing, and all of a sudden there was an earthquake in Candlestick Park, and the, like, the video stopped, and it was like a tragedy. All of a sudden, California hasn't had an earthquake in decades. All of a sudden, they have an earthquake? That quick, paradise could be ruined. Their housing market could crash. Th that's how life is. Everything is just perfect, and all of a sudden, things just shift. There's trouble in paradise. Okay. You got two, You got a great job. Your wife's got a great job. Kids doing all right in school. All of a sudden, shit went downhill. Or shit went, uh, you know, in the Gulf Stream. Came up East Coast. Damn it. But shout out to the West Coast. There's no exact science. But be mindful of all these things and keep it simple. Colin. Colin. What's up, man? Seize the day. That's right. Make the most of every time window of your life, every opportunity, and realize your age, realize, don't wait for the perfect conditions, okay? I didn't wait for the perfect conditions. Start now and refine as you go. I went to a foe. Red tide sucks, but at least we don't have thousands of dead fish on the shore, yeah, like to do on the West Coast, like the West Coast, yeah, but there was a bunch of dead fish uh, in Palm Beach County area. Uh, I saw some clippings of it, not as much as the uh, Southwest uh, and again, because when Lake Okeechobee dumps its water, uh, Lake o Okeechobee is the second biggest, uh, basically body of water, lake, um, non salt water, uh, in the entire United States of America. Okay. And so it's, it's basically, there was a dam built up about 70 years ago surrounding it. Some of it for the residents, some of it to protect the, um, sugar fields that's south of it. Um, and so when, the rainy season comes in the summer, what they do is they disperse that water periodically to relieve the pressure from the dams. Okay. And when they do that, the algae in that water flows basically southwest through the canal system into the Gulf Stream. Okay. Uh, and there's a variety of other factors. I'm keeping it very simple based on, you know, my knowledge and my research of it, but this is kind of what happens. And this algae some, again, natural current from the heat, uh, from the conditions in the environment. Some man-made from the pollutants, from the farm. Not from the city, from the farm, fertilizer, uh, sewer system, etc. Big cattle and sugar uh, fields, uh, produce fields. A lot of farmland in Florida. People don't realize that. People think of Miami. People think of Tampa, all these, Orlando. Most of Florida is rural land. Just like most of America's rural land, just like most of China's rural land, most of the population in the world is concentrated in a small piece of land within a whole body of land. People don't realize that. And, um, but you know, these are just some things we're sharing tonight. Okay, Ellen Twofo. By the way, good analogy about the red tide. Thank you. Things in life hitting you unexpectedly, I, but you can't live in fear. Here's the other part. Here's the good news: can't live in fear. Can't live in fear and you can't wish your days away. You can't worry your days away. You got to seize the moment. If you wait for the per perfect conditions, nothing ever gets done. Uh, now, certainly when I saw that red tide here today, because I'm, I'm very close to making a final decision uh, on this uh, home base, that concerned me. I said, oh, shit, Sam. You know, if you buy something in this area and that affects you, I mean, that, that'll certainly affect the property value. Certainly. Certainly. And, but again, what am I doing? I mean, I'm low. My risk is low. Okay, because it's a low-value property, low taxes. The biggest cost is the HOA. So I have a mitigated risk, but it is risk. There's no guarantee. Um, so this is something uh, I'm thinking about. Linda, K.O. Casito, full of dead fish. So sad. Oh, is that must be a town I'm not aware of. Yeah, it is sad. I mean, I, I, I you know, of course, then when it hit, hit home for me, hit my backyard, basically, I researched it, and I saw that, this, you know, southwest Florida has been really dealing with this a tragedy. Um, manatees, which are like big mammal fish or whatever, uh, dying and stuff. I mean, it's, uh, if it, look, if Florida ever lost its waterways, if they became over polluted and over problems, it would be a, it'd be a catastrophe. Florida is the most tourist driven economy in the entire world. It's the most visited state, maybe the most visited place in the entire world for tourism. Tourism 
is the money machine of Florida. Okay. And it's outside environment. Florida is built, its economy is built on tourism and outside sports, as far as water sports, fishing, agriculture. If that if that goes downhill, uh, but again, uh, if uh, you know, if uh, California had an earthquake, uh, if you know, New York, I mean New York, the Hudson River, <laughs> that that's got like a black tide. Let me tell you something, okay? So you know, it's all relative. I don't want to scare anyone. Um, but this is just, you know, part of life. Okay. Dealing with trouble in paradise. Uh, so, you know, so keep it simple. Keep your, your risk very low. Okay. Cause things can change very quick. Ice thesis almost through the week. That's right. One more day. Then, uh, not much changes for me other than I get all my time back. And that's my goal. My goal is to eventually own all my time. Uh, I'm already achieved one of my life goals. What's that say? I'm living in a car. No, go in commando. Okay. Go in commando. Change my life. Uh, what do I recommend? You go commando. Okay. Uh, start there before you start throwing out stuff, throw out your drawers. And I'm not talking about like your drawers. I'm talking about like your panties and your boxers, throw them out. People don't want to hear that, but that's the truth. That's what you need to free yourself. Woo. Sam, you ever get Cape Canaveral? Yeah, I know where Cape Canaveral is. Space Coast right above, um, Cocoa Beach, uh, and which is above Melbourne as well. Yes, definitely. Sam, you ever go to Cape Canaveral? Been there a few times. Yes. I did a couple of videos from there early on. I'm Florida where they launched the spaceships. Yep. I'm very aware of it. I visited SpaceX. Uh, which is like the former NASA, and then Eli, Elon Musk, who took that over as a private company, now owns it. It's called SpaceX. Uh, Elon Musk is also the person who uh, leads Tesla, an electrical car vehicle, and they almost went bankrupt uh, years ago. And the only reason Tesla survived was because of a government bailout, because the government pump, pumped money uh, in their company because they deemed that they were, they basically got a grant. A grant is the, mo the government gives you free money because they deem that your mission is going to overall improve society in some way. Uh, you know, uh, so, you know, same thing they did with the big corporation banks. Uh, so, you know, look, you know, at the end of the day, like I say, the system is a little bit rigged, uh, but the system, you know, it is what it is. It's still the best system out there. But uh, yeah, no, I'm aware of it. Uh, Joe Boss. And then he gave five palm trees, four hands and a piece. Same back to you, brother. Ice thesis. Some people I know always complain and have to avoid them or else I will become like them. Well, that's totally true. Bad company corrupts good character. It's from the book of Proverbs, and I believe it. Cut people off. I cut people off quick. If you don't get me, I don't want to hurt you, and I don't want to force myself on you, but we're just going to go our separate ways. No debate. No debate about who I am, about who you are. You be you. I'll be me. If we get each other, thumbs up. If we don't, peace emoji. That's it. Dr. Looney Tunes Show, how long have you been driving? Uh, well, not long today. I mean, I, I do it in increments each day. Uh, and then I have to structure my day, right? Because I have to have a certain amount of time working. So I have to have a certain amount of time sitting down in Starbucks doing work, not driving. So for me, it's just like a regular, I, I have structured this lifestyle. It's just like I'm living in a house. But at the end of the day, I'm not going to a house. I'm going back to my car and then I have a routine on where I'm going to park, whether it's a campground or a local area I've scouted out. But I wake up the same time I would as if I had a house. I go to the gym as if I would have a house. I go to work. I just go in Starbucks and I'm there for eight hours plus sometimes. I take break. I take my lunch break and then I go. And then, you know, at night I go to Publix. Then I do live and then I'll get ready. I, you know, I have a spot to go to. I have to. You have to structure yourself. And that's where many nomads fed. They wander like lost puppy dogs because they think th throwing everything out and living cheap is going to save their life. And that's how they end up with poor habits and, and wandering around. They're wander. I'm not a wanderer. I, everything I do is a focus. Now, of course, you know, you drift a little bit to have a little bit of fun and creativity, but I have a level of structure and focus in my life. Um, I'm not just like drifting where does the wind blow me? Because in my opinion, if you do like that, the wind's going to, the wind's just going to wash you away. You have to have some level of, you can, you don't control your life because at any time, any of us, you know, things can happen outside of our control, but you know, you steer your life based on how you structure your life. Uh, and I know that from, whether it's my weight loss or whether it's my career or whether it's getting rid of relationships. I know that, you know, through, through my experience. So you gotta have structure. I went to a vote. I have a friend that lives on a beach in Deerfield. Okay. She's have been having respiratory symptoms in the indoors with AC on, and I hope it clears up quickly. Yeah. I mean, now to be fair, I know somebody who, in, who in, Jer in who lives in New Jersey who complains about respiratory problems and all they do is sit in their house. Okay. 
uh, they complain about the air filter this you know there's no one way uh but i certainly yeah certainly uh, look at you know what we're talking about with the red tie is something to be affected but uh, again i, I want to be clear that nothing is an excuse for self-care and for me what i've really found is i hate air conditioning i hate heating um i love the natural air now look you know when it's real hot when it's real cold well i don't like cold weather period but i like the fresh natural air and your body needs that pretty much what what the human body needs to survive is air water uh and food and sun air water food and sun and that's why the fish are dying in the certain waterways because they don't have the air the Algae sucks the air, sucks the oxygen out of the water or whatever it may be, however you freeze, and, and the fish just basically die. Uh, disaster. Andy G, oh wow, that long? Hope it clears up. That's some scary stuff. It is scary. Makes you want to say, oh shit, should I really buy or should I just live my car? Joe Boss, it's awful smell. A few weeks ago, I went to take some photos of the dead fish. Oh, you're out there? And almost vomited. That ain't even funny, man. Ran back to my car. He, he, yeah, man, I, I, my heart goes out to everyone affected, man. I mean, you don't really realize it till it hits you in the backyard. Connor, love and respect to England. Connor's in the house. Somebody give me a lizard emoji. Woohoo. California is done with the huge earthquake. Ready to rumble their state. I hope not. Uh, you know, look, and you shouldn't live in fear because all of a sudden you say, all right, I'm going to move to, you know, Oklahoma. And then all of a sudden, tornado hits and your fucking house is blown apart. So there's nowhere you can go in this world to escape trouble in paradise. This is what I'm sharing with you. All you can do is go where you're inspired to go, use wisdom, and then that's it. Let me tell you something. I don't want the red tide to get me. But let me tell you something. I'd rather it be the red tide than the cold fucking winters of New Jersey. Excuse my language. Okay, That's the truth. Okay. So pick your poison. Trouble in paradise or misery in Jersey. I'll take trouble in paradise. Okay, never forget it. God forbid. Hey, I gave it. Red tide is coming in Florida. Oh, shit. It's coming in Florida. A whale dies. The carcass attracts bacteria. It turns into a large, uh, forgive me if I say this wrong, glacious red goo that kills everything it touches, filling the beach with dead fish. That may be part of it. Like I said, basically in my research, what it, what basically it is is a cumulative effect of many things. Okay, It's not one thing. It's a cumulative effect of many things. And so that may be part of it, uh, you know, the ecosystem, well, everything's part of it. And the climate's part of it, you know. So, you know, again, but this is life. Uh, there's really, when a lot of times there's not one answer to one thing. There's it's, uh, several things. Um, and that that's why when it's several things, it makes it harder to solve. Why? Because you, you can't focus. The difference between light and a laser is the focus. The difference between a light and laser is focus. Focus is a very powerful thing. So when you have a problem that's spread out and it's, it's an cumulative effect of many things, you can't focus on one thing and you can't get the thing resolved right away. You gotta, you got your, you got a broaden focus. So you're not a laser. And when you're living simple, you're a laser because all your focus can go to what to it wants. When you have a big house, when you got a lot of shit, when you got a lot of clothes, got a lot of knickknacks, you know, you can't focus on getting your life together because you think about this, you think about that. The difference between a light and a laser is focus. Never forget it. Okay. Bull Jaff. Any tips on staying warm during the winter when living in a car? I'm making a jump in February, but want to plan now and be ready. Now, no tips. Layer up, and that's it. Uh, it's going to be cold. You're going to freeze your ass off. It's going to suck. Okay, but it was still worth it for me. I'd still do it again to get where I'm at now. Uh, and I, I, you know, so there's going to, you know, January and February are going to suck, period. March, a little bit suspect. December, not too bad. January and February, that's the dead of the winter. Bundle up, and, and this is my biggest advice. If you need to, go to a hotel room for a few weeks because I got very sick last week, I mean last year, uh, and it just is what it is. Now, I really, I don't know if I got sick from car living or really, I, there was a couple times at work when I went outside without a jacket and it was just stupid of me. Um, but that's what it is. Um, uh, best of luck to you. GM, GM1989. What up, Sam? What's going on? What's the best investment you made or when did you get your break? The best investment I made was starting work immediately, immediately as soon as I could legally because you can't invest anything until you have money. You don't get money until you work. I worked as soon as I legally could. 
Okay, worked in a CD store for minimum wage. Okay, at 17, 16. And I tried to get a couple jobs before that, Burger King at the gas station, and I didn't get them. Okay, the second best investment I made was paying off my debt. Okay, so the first two investments to get your financial freedom is work immediately. Second one is pay off debt immediately. And the third one is be consistent. Anything you can do above that while living below your means will be cherry on the top. But the foundation of financial freedom is work so you can get yourself an income, pay off your debt because debt's a big burden, and live below your means. If you can sustain that over a period of time, because that's what it takes, a period of time to build up your career, to build up wealth, then if you get a couple great breaks along the way, praise the Lord. And we all need breaks. We all need grace. Uh, but that's overall what I've done. I'm 38. Okay, I've been working since I was 16, 17. Okay. Um, went to school for five years at night while I worked a full-time job. Trade school to be an electrician. Studied another two years after that to get my electrical contractor's license. Went through t hard times. Went from making, I don't know what I was making, uh, $40 an hour when I topped out at that time as an electrician. Times got slow. Went back to working in a pizzeria for $10 in tips for delivering pizza. Traded in my car, bought a 1990 Volvo, drove that around for a couple of years. Kept, kept applying for jobs, failed some interviews, did good on some, got an entry level position as like an electrical engineer for, for a technology company, worked my way up. Then change jobs so I can get a higher role in that same industry. And I've been with the same company for 10 years and did a variety of things in between. But that overall tells you. So, and during the course of that time, many of my friends, they tried to find a, a get rich quick scheme. There is none. There is none. In my experience, there is none. Look, we all need luck. Once in a while, you may get lucky. Uh, and I, I do try to do certain investments with stocks, different things. But even if I ever did hit it big with that, what I could tell you is the only way I was able to get to that point was because I, I worked and I was able to have money to do something with. You can't invest anything if you don't have money. You can't have money if you don't work. And most investments in the beginning fail. So you have to have enough money to sustain that. And you have to have money keep coming in because bills always going to come. Gas always going to come. Always got to feed yourself. Always got to have insurances. And so this is what I've learned financially. Um, May West. Hey, Sam. Hey, May. What's up, May? Snow dog. Hey, brother. Hey, Sammy. Life is better without a woman. I agree. In my opinion, do what you want. Trouble in paradise. Well, I agree with that. Look, I even the Bible says it. Even Paul the Apostle, thousands of years ago, in the Bible, wrote in the book of Corinthians, you're better to be single, less burden, because when you're married, you have obligation not only to yourself and God, but also to your spouse. But he said, I'm not trying to put a restriction on you. Do whatever helps you to serve the Lord the best. So if you feel you need to be married with kids, do you. But at the end of the day, I think many, not all, people are, are more blessed to be single. Some people are blessed to be married. Some people would drink themselves to death if they didn't have someone else in their life. But some people will drink themselves to death because they have someone else in their life. You have to, you have to know you. Knowing yourself is the key to all decisions. Don't be married too young. Don't have kids too young. Don't have more than two kids unless you're wealthy. In my opinion, do what you want. What breaks the camel's back? It's not the overweight chick that just came out of Chick-fil-A. It's the straw. It's not the overweight lady who just got out of Publix that jumped on the camel. It's when the guy who brought her groceries to the camel and put the straw on her lap, that's what breaks the camel's back. It's the accumulative effect of many things over time. That's what caused trouble in paradise. So it's all of a sudden, you fall in love with someone in your mid-20s. You get serious, you get an apartment together, then you decide to get a house together, you upgrade your square footage, you decide to have kids, you decide to upgrade your car, you get a raise, you're thinking about buying a second home or going on vacation. The cumulative effect of too much stress, too many things, not living simple enough, well, eventually, trouble in paradise. Red tide, here we come, baby. Sugar cane, fertilizer, overdevelopment, pollution, cutting of some government regulation, natural occurring things. All of a sudden, red tide. That's what happens. Trouble in paradise. Never forget. It. <clears throat> Good job. Arabi. Without cooking, without eating meat, how do you get your healthy protein? On road, just curious. Any tips? Beans. 
There's plenty of health bars with protein. Um, soy, some soy pro products have protein. There's many uh, natural ways to get protein. Okay. Most people I know who eat meat are overweight and high blood pressure. How do they get health? Get rid of the meat. So a lot of times people ask me, how do I get protein? Beans. There's health bars. There's soy products. How do you get your health? Get rid of meat. How does a meat eater get their health? Get rid of meat. You'll figure out how to get protein. That's what I've learned. That's what I've learned. Good question. Tom Hanks, Sam, got an interview tomorrow. I'm going to pray for you, brother. First real one. Good job. You should have three questions prepared. Here's what you should do on an interview. One is you should know how that company makes money. I made a mistake one time. I went into a job interview. The guy asked me, what, what does our company do? I basically gave him a general answer. You need to know how that company makes money. Then you need to give three things that you can do to improve that company without overselling yourself and with making them feel assured that you're not there to threaten them. You're not there to make them life harder. The minute, the minute the person interview, the person who interviews you, the minute they feel that you're going to make their life harder, you're fucking out of there. Why? Because who the hell wants their life to be harder? I don't. You'll never hire someone that's going to be, that you think is going to be a pain in the ass. So don't play up to them, but let them know, look, I'm not here to compete. I'm not here to compete. I'm here to compliment. Okay. I'm a team player. I'm confident in myself, but I'm here to compliment. Here's three things that I've done throughout my work history that I can bring to the table. Give three examples. Give one example tied in exactly to what they do in their business uh, operations. Do they sell um do they sell soy milk? You need to have an example of what you can do to help sell soy milk. Whatever it is. Okay. I don't know. But these are some things I want. The last thing you should ever talk about on the first job interview is money. Never talk about money on the first job interview. If you're done, you're finished. You should be ready to be researching what the average is for that position for that company. You should go on glassdoor.com. Okay, get all their reviews. Okay. You should go in Indeed.com. Look at their reviews. You don't talk money and health benefits until the second interview when HR calls you back. That's when you negotiate. When you go in there for the first interview, you're not negotiating for a salary. You're negotiating for the opportunity to negotiate for the salary. Never forget that. Now, I'm talking about career. I'm not talking about like a job filler, which I've had. When you're going to deliver pizza, there's no fucking job interview. The job interview is you have, you have a pulse. I'll never forget that. I was working for a company. And uh, our company had security. And, uh, you know, you know the, the security guards were a low-level position, okay? You know, we were in a corporate uh, IT industry. And so, but we had like a serious, like, vice president of security. And he oversaw the security officers. So, I remember like, you know, somebody I knew in the company was trying to get their family member as, a, as an entry-level security guard. Because there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with building your way up. And so he had asked the VP of security, he said, how do I get my son or whatever? How do I get him in as a security position? What qualifications do we need? The fucking vice president of security looked at him and said, he got a fucking pulse. <laughs> He's hired. That's it. You go to Walmart, there's no negotiation. I mean, you know, come on, you got a pulse. But what I'm trying to tell you is when you negotiate a career, you got to be prepared to go on that interview. You got to have three good questions, right? What's a good question? Who, what's the reason for the last person leaving this job position? Who will I be directly reporting to? What is your management style? Give me one example of a task that you will have me do within the first two weeks of starting. Those are three questions that you should ask in any job interview. Write that down. Go watch this replay, rewind that, pause it, and write that down. Why? Because you're going to need that. Okay. I just gave you a lot. Of, I mean, it took me a lot of times to fail to get this. And then even all that being said, there's no guarantee. Got to get a little lucky. Guys got to like you or girls got to like you and, and it's got to hit it off. Got to have chemistry. I'll never forget. I was talking to a, a hot Asian uh, dentist who I was hitting on a little bit when I was uh, on an eye doctor, when I was hitting on a little bit, when I was getting new contacts. And I was, we were talking about relationships. And at that time, I was still trying to figure out the whole relationship game. And I said to her, well, maybe I think I'm at the point in my life where I'm just going to try to date my friend, like date a friend. And she goes, yeah, that's fine. It's good to like be friends with the person you date, but you got to have passion. You got to have some passion. You can't just have friendship. 
Now, if you're going to be intimate at the best level, you got to have chemistry. And that's what it is for a job interview. You're dating. Yes, you have to be friends. Yes, you have to have common interests, but then there's got to be magic. There's got to be some chemistry for a career, for a job. You do whatever you got to do. You don't understand what I'm saying? Good job. Okay. Uh, he said, it doesn't help that the lady is a stunner. Well, please don't get distracted. Respect her. And you know what I mean? Going to be around this one. Uh, yeah, at the time, you're already on the wrong foot, brother. Way off, bro. Way off. Don't get distracted, man. Respect her. It's all professional. Now, look, you guys catch me. This is my off time, okay? In, in business world, you, you got to be professional, man. And you got to, you know, you got to be yourself. But you, pff, brother, don't get caught in the Me Too movement, brother. Don't get caught in the Me Too movement. Because next thing you know, you're getting interviewed to be the Supreme Court justice. And the lady said you raped her when she was in uh, high school. And you may have. Okay, you may have been a drunken I don't know. Maybe not. I don't know. But it's a disgrace if you did and he covered it up. Okay. So what I can tell you is, I don't know, but respect her, treat her right, and just keep your head down and do your job. Good job. Sharon, oh my goodness, that is the truth. What about what Paul said? Yeah, Paul broke that down. Read 1 Corinthians, or like Trump would say, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, I believe verse 7. Break that down for you, all right? Snow Dog, you're so right, thank you. Snow Dog, thanks. Khalid, what's up, man? Heard that, brother. Praise the Lord, Khalid. Good to see you, brother. Love and respect. Jacksonville in the house. I was at Jacksonville. Good police. Cedric, a lot of jobs in Jacksonville. Jacksonville is booming. Health industry, booming. Okay. Of course, like any city, you got good and bad, but the outskirts of the city is developing like crazy. A lot of schools. It's not tropical climate, it's subtropical, but I would put it on the list. Okay. Uh, Cedric, what do you consider as paradise? For me, living the life I am now as far as a simple life with low obligations, low commitment, high quality of life with regards to living where I want to live, controlling more and more of my time, controlling more and more of my resources and having healthy relationships and having a healthy mind, body, and soul. That to me is paradise. Praise the Lord and going commando and occasionally dating a MILF. Okay. But not dating, but you know, we go out for drinks, but I don't even drink. That's the wild part. Yes. Good job. Um, clean. Okay. Ford got rid of me. Good job. Dairy. Yep. Now, look, if you have a goal to get rid of meat and dairy, but 10% of the time you backslide, guess what you just did? You just improved your life by 90%. So if Khalid, if K Ford just got rid of meat, like I did in the beginning of journey, but then all of a sudden I'm making a trip up through Jacksonville and I catch K Ford in February at a Popeye's fried chicken parking lot, backsliding, trying to hide from me because he said he got rid of meat. You know what? He still improved his life by 90% because that's the same thing I did. I got rid of meat. I got rid of uh, all dairy. Then all of a sudden, once in a while, I backslide in Popeye's fried chicken parking lot, eating a 12 piece spicy with fries on the side. That's what happens in life. Before you got to get back up. Now I'm not doing that anymore. 90% of my diet is all fish. And even 10% of the time, I mean, 90% of my diet is all plant-based. 10% of the time when I have fish, it's not fried or anything. It's just, you understand what I'm saying? So have an aim, have a focus, have a structure. Aim for the moon, even if you miss your amongst the stars. No aim, no focus, no structure, total disaster. Okay, good job, K4. Um, AC 101, from 14 to 15, definitely a plant eater now. That's right, keep going forward. Good job. Tom Hanks, this is for an internship. Should I still give them reasons on how to make the company better? Yeah, because an internship is, based, well, I don't know if it's a paid or unpaid internship. There's two different types. But either way, what you're doing is you're practicing to be a professional. You're paying your dues. So you should form good habits, okay? Uh, because then when you form habits, they're second nature. And you're going to need that for your real, real career, okay? Because this is building your career. As you go up in the ladder, you want to have already done what you're trying to do or at least have some habits that are going to help you. You always have to refine yourself, but that's you should approach this tomorrow like game day. Okay, not like uh, preseason basketball. This is game day, baby. You gotta get focused. You gotta get tense. But you gotta be under self control. Okay, you can't get distracted by her beauty. Or you gotta be focused here, guy. I love you, Tom. You're gonna do good. Don't worry. And even if you fail, guess what? That's part of love. That's part of life. But you gotta go in there serious, but not too serious. You understand what I'm saying? Good job, Tom. For insurance company, don't matter if it's for insurance company or pizzeria. Well, pizzeria, I mean, different story. But Insurance company, there's a lot of multi-billion dollar insurance companies. Geico, billion dollar company. So it's all relative. That may be part of a career building step. Tom, haha, I'm just playing. I'm definitely going to be respectful. Good job. And professional. Good job. 
Thank you for the insight. Love and respect. Chevy, what's up, Sam? Shout out to the Chevy Spark, the best car you can get for under 15000 Okay? And and when it breaks down in 10 years, what do you do? Throw that shit out and get another one. Same thing you do with an RV at $10,000. Throw it out after 10 years and get another one. Good job. Tom, it's paid internship. Love you, Sam. Love you, too. You know I love you. All right. Are there any more comments? Or should we end this thing short and sweet? Let me see what time it is. Uh, I think we'll end it. But let me roll down my window. Give everyone a second to think about what I just said. Please show your love and support by giving an effort to hit a thumbs up if you want to. If you don't want to, don't be controlled by anyone, including me. Just do whatever you want. But I'm going to say that. Okay, put it out there. Other than that, we hit them hard tonight, guys. I did the best I could. That's all I can do. It was disappointing that in the beginning of the video, hopefully most people don't turn it off as soon as they see the low-quality uh, audio. But what do you do when there's trouble in paradise? Keep going. Try not to give up. Just do your best. Uh, but that's the only way to get through it. Just got to keep pushing forward. One foot in front of the other. Tom, thumbs up always. Thank you. I want to a phone. Good talk, Sammy. Always. Thank you. Love and respect to the Space Coast, Melbourne, my friend Karen, my friend Ellen to a phone, and everyone, everyone in the live chat. May you go in peace. May you not talk bad to yourself. May you not self-criticize. May you have good relationships. May you eat good food. May you go for good walks. And may you live your dream. Whether it's living in a car by the beach or living in the mountains in a house, whatever you want to do. Live simple, though, as possible, even if you get a home base. I may get one. But that way you mitigate, you lower the stress. And when you lower the stress, you increase quality of life. Never forget it. Good night, Zakia. Love and respect to Alaska, but get your ass to Florida because it's too cold. I don't even care if it's a red tide in Florida. I can't go to Alaska. What are you, crazy? It's too cold. I love you, though.